Hi, uh, welcome back to Rose Scientific for a, another product review. Today uh, we're going to be looking at the Higher HCP168. It's a CO2 incubator, um, but before we look inside that, just like to remind you that if you want to look at any other uh, product reviews that we've done, feel free to look uh, on our website and you'll find some links to other products that we've looked at in the past. So again, today we're in the workshop and we've just uh, unboxed this, this model. So excuse the fact that it's uh, sitting on a pallet, um, but we like to bring these things to you as soon as we possibly can. So some of the features that uh, we have with this model, it's a 168 litres internal capacity. Um, being an incubator, it has a temperature range of plus three of ambient up to 55 degrees and the CO2 content can be either at zero or any figure up to 20%. The, uh, one of the other advantages of this model is it's, it's small, so it can go either on a bench or under a bench, but there are some mounting feet located on the top of it, so you can stack two on top uh, or one on top of the other. You can see it has a, a lovely uh, LCD touch screen there, which we'll have a bit more of a look at in detail in a moment. Um, inside uh, the unit, if we open up the front door, we can see mirrored stainless steel, so it's going to be a bit bright perhaps, um, but it has an inner glass door there so that the samples uh, don't lose their temperature and uh, CO2 concentration, but that just opens up. The units supplied from the factory with three shelves, they're not installed obviously, um, but they're still wrapped in their packaging. I haven't opened those yet. The other uh, feature of this unit is you can place water in the lower section uh, of the uh, cabinet so that you can maintain a humidity of above 90% if you require that for your samples. One of the other features on this is that it also has a, uh, a dry heat sterilization uh, program that heats the interior of the cabinet to 180 degrees uh, and maintains that for two hours so that it sterilizes the interior uh, prior to you putting your samples in. All of those features are accessible through uh, the control panel, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Uh, now we'll go and have a look around uh, the rear side of the instrument. So yeah, we're just coming around the back now uh, so we can see what is uh, available here. Um, there is a access port here, 35 millimeter uh, diameter so that you can put probes or other um, devices into the cabinet. There is a uh, sintered filter drain and valve here uh, so that uh, gases can be released. Um, at this point here is the gas inlet for the CO2 and we'll have a look at that in a little more detail. And over here on the other side that you can't see so well uh, is a little electrical connector block so that you can connect to remote alarm uh, functionality if that's something you use in your LIMS system. So included with the cabinet uh, is a few little accessories to help you to get it to work. You get some tubing uh, to connect up to your gas supply. You also get a filter um, which fits on there um, between the gas supply and the interior of the cabinet. There's a little bracket to hold that there which, which just sits in, in the holes on the back of the cabinet. Um, some clamps etc. There is also a drain hose that's supplied and if we just wander around to the front of the cabinet now. I did mention earlier that you can put uh, water into it if you need to have a high humidity uh, interior. Um, so you do add water by simply uh, adding a jug, uh, filling a jug and adding liquid into the bottom here. There is a uh, slope on the base of the unit so the water will fill towards the rear. Um, this drain hose that's supplied with it um, is there for connecting to the drain outlet here. Uh, so you can put that in there and you can drain the water back out of there. There's a drain hole located at the rear there. 
This is a little sensor to detect when the water level is uh, high or low. Uh, so you may not want a water or high humidity sample, so that gives you the opportunity to remove the liquid, the water. Interesting thing that's happened just now as we're talking is the door alarm has come on. Uh, so that means the door has been opened greater than 30 seconds. Um, we're getting a little buzzing sound and an alarm on the front there. Now we can silence the alarm uh, manually by pressing the silence button here. But in this case, the unit has detected that the door is closed, so it's cancelled uh, the alarm function. What we can see, um, looking at the temperature there, so because we've had the door open, we've lost some temperature. Um, it's turned red, um, and that's just a visual indicator that you're below your set temperature. You can see on the top here, uh, in green, is the CO2 concentration. To the right of that, we have uh, the set point, which is zero in this case, because we're not connected to a gas supply. Uh, another thing that you can see uh, in the centre of the inner glass door is a, a smaller access port where you uh, can put in an independent probe if you want to monitor the gas concentration or temperature. Uh, if not, you just plug the hole up with the rubber bun. So you can see here we have a, a nice 7-inch uh, LCD touchscreen which makes the, uh, the unit pretty easy to use. Um, it's very simple. If you want to set the temperature, for example, you can simply touch the screen um, and it brings up the settings. So in this case, it asks you the temperature scale, be it Celsius or Fahrenheit, what your set point is, which can just be adjusted by using the up or down button or holding your finger on it to move it quickly. You also have uh, the opportunity to add alarm points. So if it's 37.5 degrees in this case, uh, you can you know, uh, make that 37.8 if you want. And that's the time at which the over temperature alarm will come on. The same applies for a low temperature alarm um, and an over temperature cutout, which is the safety cutout, which will turn off the heating rather than alarming. It'll actually turn the heating off. Um, in this case, it's set one degree above. The same uh, also applies for the CO2 concentration. Um, you can increment the setting um, and you can increment, increment or decrement the uh, upper and lower limits. I'll put that back to zero because it will alarm eventually. Uh, there's a save button there uh, to save your settings when you're finished. Or you can use the um, home screen or the return back one screen. You'll notice there's a bit of tape here on the bottom of the screen. Uh, that's a USB port that we haven't opened up yet. Uh, that allows you to, sa uh, to save the data from uh, whatever has been happening with your incubator. Uh, if we look in the record function, um, this shows you uh, a history of what has happened in terms of alarms, uh, so you can review it. In this case, you can see on the left here is the date and time um, and a door opening alarm. So that's it's 9.42 this morning and that alarm just went off a little while ago when I, we were showing you the interior of the cabinet. Uh, we had a low temperature alarm uh, last night. This was running uh, over the evening, uh, night and evening. So it's just a history and you can scroll up and down on those uh, how you like. So that's all records. You have the opportunity just to view the temperature uh, related alarms or the gas related alarms or door ajar, door open, or if there are any sensor failures that it may have um, determined or if there's been a power cut um, of any note. And you can see at the bottom here we have the download button which allows you to download to the USB drive. We'll go back one screen. Um, the event record uh, tells us everything that's been happening. So you can see we've opened and closed the door in the last few minutes. Pretty straightforward. You can see prior to doing that, 
we had adjusted the concentration uh, or the CO2 concentration um, levels. So it's just monitored the fact that we've made a change and then changed it back. Um, it tells you that it was 1.7 and the new value was 0.5. Um, so that was just when we were playing with that in the last demonstration. Again, that can be split down into more detail, just showing either door openings, settings, um, sterilisation, and we'll have a look at that in a sec. And the run state just shows us the current state of some of the key components, the PTFE filter, the CO2 sensor and the fan. In this case, they uh, have been running or installed is probably a better word, not running, installed 271 days out of a recommended 3,650, 3, so a 10 year life. And go back to the home screen again. If you want to look at the uh, settings, we have quite a few settings there available. Uh, and I'm not going to go through those in great detail with you. Um, but again, this is what we saw before how to set the temperature and CO2. Um, this one is about the sterilization process. Um, and this is where I say uh, it, uh, it tells you the steps to go through to do the 180 degree sterilization, which essentially is opening the door, removing your samples, putting some water in the base uh, as we did, uh, closing the door up and then hitting the start button. And the system will then go through and uh, heat up the chamber to 180 degrees, maintain it at two hours, and then cool it down. Um, and whilst that's occurring, the screen will tell you what's happening. Okay, the next thing we see is the uh, button called initial, and that's just about the initial setup um, for the unit. So you're setting up the day and time, the language, um, the alarm volume, operating mode, so that's uh, either uh, what it calls ordinary, which is normal, and authorised. If we hit authorised, it will require user access with PIN numbers and setup of uh, those operators. Uh, the time delay for the alarm to come on, the volume of the buttons or the screen as you click it. Um, we can see screen brightness, so we can you know, dim and brighten the screen, whatever suitable. We can ask the screen to hibernate uh, from 11 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning. Um, same as the screen saver and auto logout applies to the time for users um, IDs to automatically log out and uh, the time setting before the door alarm will come on. It's always important to hit the save button at the end of all of that. Um, this unit also has some added functionalities. It's Wi-Fi compatible. Um, right now we don't have it set up. I don't have a network in this room that can access it but it does allow you to um, connect this machine to your, uh, to your wireless net, uh, internet and then you can download a software program onto your phone or an app onto your phone and you can monitor some of the key um, factors that are happening on the unit, remotely that is. Users is simply there for user setup. In this case, it won't allow me to enter that right now because we're not in the we we're not in the mode where it's looking for user information because we're in the uh, not in the authorized field, which you may have remembered from the previous screens. And we have some genuine uh, general uh, information about the unit, serial number, etc. Okay, what we go to the next button, we can see the graph. And this uh, shows us what's been happening. In this case, this is the temperature, but we can swap it to the CO2 if we want to monitor that. We have uh, four tabs across the top. In this case, we're monitoring the last two hours of performance, but we have the option to look at 24 hours, seven days and a month. So if we look at uh, 24 hours, uh, we can see a bit of a spike here in the temperature. Um, that's when I had set it to uh, 55 degrees yesterday. But it just gives a quick visual indication um, that's a bit of a safety or security issue so that the user can be comfortable that everything has been uh, running whilst they haven't been present um, and running exactly how it was set. And then obviously the 
longer span of seven days and one month. Um, we also have the you know, same thing for the CO2. Again, we've got no data there because there's no CO2 connected and we've been on uh, the 0.0, .0 setting. Along the bottom, we have uh, some more buttons. This one is the sterilization um, commencement uh, program button. So we press that, we get to where we were. Um, we saw that a couple of minutes ago, how to set up the sterilization and then the start button. Again, we're not going to start that one right now. We have an opportunity here to write messages um, and send messages, um, which is a bit of an interesting feature. I haven't tried uh, this, but I believe you can send email messages uh, as long as you're connected to the Wi-Fi. So in this case, we've got a notice. Um, so what I had done yesterday is to just test this was um, I've put in a, a message or a notice and I've put in here, I'm really easy to use. And what happens is that um, each time the system goes into uh, its sleep mode and the screen uh, goes blank, when you touch the screen to refresh, um, it brings up this message so that any new user that comes up to the incubator can see the message that you've left it. And it might say, you know, don't, don't open me because I've got very important samples in there. So it stays that little uh, laboratory issue where you end up with post-it notes and whatever stuck to the front of the door. And you can get rid of these messages, you can write anything you like. Um, if, for example, it brings up a keyboard, the effect of time for the notice, etc., and then what you want to type in there, keyboard, very straightforward. So I think uh, that covers oh, most of the, the screen there, oh, apart from this one, which was your mute for when the alarm's occurring. And this one here uh, is the water level. Uh, in this case, it's showing red because there's no water in the base of it. Um, if we put water in, this turns to white like the re re remaining buttons here. And once um, the unit is in a sterilization, sorry, not a sterilization, in a cycle where you are requiring humidity to be present, obviously some water will evaporate off. And when the water level drops to a level, it activates the switch and the, the red light will come on to say, hey, I'm getting low in water, um, time to fill me up. Okay, so another thing that we uh, can have a quick look at, up in the top right hand corner of the screen is a little button that says help. Um, if we press that, we get a bit of an overview on just what the uh, incubator can do. Um, if we want some more detailed information, uh, there is a uh, paper manual that's included with it. Uh, so that gives you some information. Typically what happens is that gets lost. So because we've got a nice screen there, uh, there is the opportunity to uh, view the manual on the screen. Um, there's an e-manual button there. If we press that one, we can read it that way, which is the same as the paper manual we just saw. Um, and we also have the opportunity to download that again and print it out uh, if we've lost the manual. If you'd like to see more product reviews from Rowe Scientific, um, have a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, there's, uh, they're going up there all the time. And if you do particularly like any, um, hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel.